Hi, gun people. Well, that's a pretty good one. Um, cop gets his car set on fire, and um, this is Seattle. Shocking. Um, police activity uploaded it. Make sure and like and sub to these police channels to help support them so YouTube doesn't shut them down and censor them. YouTube wants to get views, and if people like and subscribe, then they think your channel has value and they harass you less. Anyway, um, let's take a look at this. This is pretty good. Suspect throws a torch at a spell. The alley uh, just north of Denny Park uh, on south of Westlake uh, to the east of Dexter. So I think they got a call of a guy carrying a, a torch. Uh, the reason why they're probably responding to this is this isn't normal. Is this illegal? Hmm... I'm not sure. I mean, I guess if they wanted to harass you, they could probably charge you with arson because you're burning. They might charge you with endangerment because you might accidentally set a fire. But the real reason they're going after you is because burn, loot, mur murder is running around looting and destroying things. So when a guy's carrying a, a, something around that's a fire, we call that a clue that he's probably going to start a fire. But let's see how they handle it. Just walking down the alley southbound with the stick on fire. And it Okay, so this guy describes, yeah, he's just walking down the alley with a stick on fire. I I would have described him as he's got a flaming stick which can be used to ignite or start a fire. I don't know what his intentions are, but it's unsafe and we need to contact him for that reason. You want to establish probable cause. This guy just said that he's just walking down with a stick on fire. So what's the problem? Why are you even bothering with him? He's just walking down the alley southbound with the stick on fire. And it is very on fire. Very on fire. Would that be like not very on fire or really, really very on fire? And it's very on fire. All right. Wow. Look, it's very on fire. Now, see, I thought I heard yelling, and I don't know if this guy's yelling or somebody's yelling at him, but I thought I heard yelling back in here. So if he's yelling, that's critical information on what he's yelling, or he seems a little mentally unstable, he seems angry. The guy just said he's walking down the street with a stick on fire, very on fire. Um, and, I, you know, this cop looks like he's going to get out of the car here and try to stop him. Hey, Santa police, stop! Good, he identified himself, and he said stop. Fuck you! And the guy gave him an appropriate response. Fuck you. Alrighty. Well, we have communication. At least dialogue is exchanging. That's a good thing, Brick. We should hug each other because we're trying and we're reaching across the aisle. Shut up, freaking idiot. So I think the cop, the way he speeds up, is a little contempt of cop, and he's mad because the guy told him fuck you. Because a few minutes ago, he was driving normally like, yeah, he's walking down the street with a stick on fire, very on fire. Now he's flooring it. Seattle police, stop, dude! Okay, at this point right here, who can tell by this guy's body language that he's a no person? That he is not going to give up. He has no intentions of giving up. And I can tell by just stopping this frame right here, the way he moves... From the look, the target glance, to this aggressive squat, charging, threatening mode right here. This, I mean, just that one movement right there is very critical. And that's what the cop saw. And right about here, he sticks it through the windshield. See the flame inside the car? Nice. Through the windshield, pretty much where the cop is sitting... Pretty much on top of the cop's head. This is what we call a deadly force situation. Can this fire cause serious bodily injury and or death? The answer is yes. Therefore, deadly force is authorized. Now, I'm not a big shoot through the screen, through your windshield. In this case, I think it was a good move. I don't think this guy had a choice because he has this big flame here. And it looks like he's leaning to the center of the car to avoid the flame from the driver's side. And he's 
engaging the suspect from inside the car to get him off him. So, Nort, you've probably heard me on several videos say, I think shoot through the windshield is kind of stupid. It's ineffective. You lose bullet velocity. You get ricochets. You don't hit what you're aiming for. It's loud. Glass splatters back. All kind of negatives to doing this. In this situation, totality of circumstances, I'm absolutely okay with it. Now, I know there'll be some drive-by freaking ass lover that wants to come here and tell me, this guy contradicts himself. One video, he says you shouldn't do it. Now he says you can do it. He's full of shit. Okay, well, I can't help it if you're an idiot. You can't keep up. Okay, so he shot the guy and the guy ran away. Notice he did miss every round, but he got the guy off him. So it was authorized. I'm okay with what he did it. Do you think he was concerned about pesky citizens here or behind and that he cleared his background? No. He reacted to getting a flame thrown, try to burn his face off in his car, and he shot. Uh, I think most people would probably do that. However, I think government should be held to high standards since we're always told they have guns and they have training and they're there to protect us. And he did not clear his background, I guarantee you. If he says in a report, after clearing the background, making sure there was nobody in the background or field that I could have accidentally hit, I decided to engage my firearm and return fire to get the suspect to flee and stop. If he puts that in his report, he's a damn liar. Because he didn't do it. Rick, you don't know what he did. You're always picking up the cops because you shut up. You freaking idiots. <laughs> And because he jumped out of the driver's seat, the car is running by itself. And I think the car burns up pretty good. What do they put in the little comments here? Let's see. Saddle Police Department release body on Canada. Uh, suspect was seen in video burning a piece of lumber and attacked the officer. I guess that was a 2x4 he jammed through there. The suspect then runs away. Officer opens fire. Detectives later book 37-year-old suspect. Oh, he was not struck by the gunfire. What about all the cars that were struck? Did, did anybody contact those people about helping them pay for the damage that government was out there protecting the servant and shot the shit out of their car? Rick, why are you always picking up? Into the county jail. Um, the officer, Caleb, has been with the Seattle Police Department for one year. Congratulations. Welcome to the force. And is currently on paid administrative to leave the apartment room. Authority officer vehicle between the alley and Dexter uh, looking for a man who was reportedly brandishing a flaming piece of lumber. So they got him for brandishing a weapon. Uh, the officer found the man who threw the flaming lumber, believed to be a 2 by 4 into the patrol car. The officer still inside. Additionally, respond, chase the man. I thought I saw something about the car off our officer. Believed to discharge his firearm during the incident, the suspect was not struck. Additionally, as officers arrested the man, the flames from the burning lumber engulfed the entire patrol car. One officer was transported to a Harbor Medical Center for non-life-threatening burns. So he must have burned him when he stubbed it in there. Uh, I'm okay with this one. Uh, could have been done better? Eh, maybe. If and butts coconuts, you can always sit back and say, coulda, shoulda, woulda. But uh, I'm kind of okay with what he did. I mean, you can't expect a guy to shove the fire through your car, you think you're in a car, you think you got some protection. It's a good lesson that just because you're in a car, don't think you're safe. You better be ready. You better have a plan. All right, we'll end that there.